Cases out in the lobby, it might be easier to walk around if we have more people walk in. So feel free to case take up some couch space out there. Chris is in the show. That should work. Thank you. Get those into the right hands. This is concert. Concert. Yeah, it's okay. But don't don't worry about it. Well, it'll all make sense. Concert. Is that some kind of drums? 
probably read a piece of music. That's, it's the same. So guys, try and get, if you don't have it, um, oh, there's not one else up here. It's like the first time in history. <laughs> okay. Uh, try, try and get a, a Sunny Moon for two and uh, Mr. PC, if you don't have it. Okay. Who doesn't have it? You got a Sunny Moon for two, but a Mr. PC. We need a Sunny Moon for two. Yeah, yeah Sunny Moon. We've got Sunny Moon. I only have Mr. PC in B flat. Okay, Sunny Moon. So, how many Sunny Moons do you have? Know? You've got. There you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can go along with the PC. Did you get a sunny moon? So the Nelkin is sunny moon. want John in the shot. <laughs> Is it good? Jazz Studies area and with um, Jazz SLC, uh, thanks to Dr. Petroselli, who put together these fine young musicians to uh, share their time, talent, and uh, knowledge uh, in this uh, first of a series of workshops. So, if you don't mind, if you could put your hands together for uh, all of these gentlemen for making time today. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for coming. Awesome. It is uh, it's truly an honor and privilege to, to be here with all of you uh, this afternoon. Uh, this uh, this new program, SLC Jams, has been a long time coming. Uh, for those of you who know me, we've been working on this uh, for the last three years. And today is finally the day we're here. Uh, and it's, it's just amazing to have all of you here. Um, before we go any further, though, let me introduce uh, the musicians joining me today. Um, we've got Mr. Jeffrey Miller on the guitar, Jensen Mungo on the bass, and then Chris Petty on the drums. We're also uh, faculty up at the University of Utah, and uh, through each uh, residency or session in this series, we're going to be uh, rotating uh, the, the, the coaching staff and trying to give uh, everyone in the community an opportunity uh, to work with us and uh, try and join together um, professional musicians with musicians who are still up and coming. Uh, it's really, really difficult uh, here in town to get to attend a, a, a live jam session, especially because of uh, some of the unique liquor laws here in Salt Lake City. Um, so this is an opportunity not just for, uh, for students, but, but musicians of all levels to really have a place to come together and share ideas uh, and, and to meet each other. So often, you know, it's difficult to, to have an opportunity to, to chat with us, right, on a, on a really serious level before or after a gig, and, and this is going to be uh, the place to do it, to really share ideas, exchange, uh, you know, 
uh, to exchange scores and other musical information together. Um, on that note, uh, everything that we're going over today, uh, including the music that's on our set, is actually um, available as a digital download uh, through uh, the post that we made this afternoon on the University of Utah Jazz fan page. So if there's uh, music that you like, music that you maybe struggled with and would like to come back to, um, or even recordings, you know, if you'd like to hear representative uh, recordings of this music, um, there's a link with all of that information available in one place. So feel free um, to, to go back to that. Uh, week after week, uh, because you know, I think we would we would all agree, no one's going to absorb everything today, right? This is a, this is a work in progress, right? Artistry is, is a constant process of evolution and development. Uh, so if there's stuff that you want to come back to, uh, please take a look at that that file folder. Um, but for today, um, for what? Just everyone needs to be wearing a mask if you're not playing an instrument at that time or singing. So guys, let's dive in. Um, we want to. Um, we have two tunes uh, that we're going to try and tackle today in our workshop uh, component of, of the session today. And I'd like to look at uh, Sunny Moon for Two as the, uh, the first of these two. Um, these are both blueses. Um, one is a blues, one is a minor blues. We're going to talk a little bit about what that means and... Um, and some different approaches to soloing on it. Uh, but before we do, why don't we all just try and take a pass through this melody together. Let's give this a read down. Okay, if you're not a student and you're sitting in these chairs, if you wouldn't mind giving them to a student, that'd be great, be very generous, because we have limited capacity and we're happy to give you a seat out here. This is the inside here. Here we go. Very sweet. One, two, three.
everyone? How you doing, man? Good. Good. Thanks for coming. Yes, sir. All right. Um, so this is a blues form. This is a really classic blues form. What are the things? Uh, what are the things that define um, a blues form? Uh, first of all, it's a feeling, right? It's not necessarily any set number of bars um, because it's actually an African song form, okay? And African music doesn't use traditional Western notation because it's not a Western music, right? Um, so at its, at its core, right, we're dealing with a musical song form um, that has been transferred, right, transferred into a Western concept, right? We've got Western instruments here, right? Pretty much all of us, right? Uh, we've got um, a notation system, right, De derived from Western classical music, right? And um, what we're doing, right, is we are uh, sort of creating um, a bridge, right, between uh, two different musical cultures and time periods, okay? Um, so, uh, with the advent of, of published music, though, uh, specifically in the early 1900s, uh, uh, all of this really cool blues music was, uh, people wanted to play it, right? And recording technology hadn't been invented yet, right? So what happened? What happened is that publishers began codifying a song form so that it could be played in the home, okay? And that 12 bars actually comes as a result of trying to crystallize an approach so that music could be generated and published quickly, okay? It, particularly in the United States, okay? Um, so that's what we have here, is actually um, 12 bars, three phrases of, of four bars, right? Four plus four plus four. Um, and we have uh, a melodic phrase, right? that repeats three times, right? It's the same thing three times. What is that called? It's called a riff. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a riff, a motive, right? It's a musical idea, right? Um, and we can use this Right, as fundamental material uh, to improvise with. So, um, for example, right, like as we start to improvise on this, you can think about taking variations of this idea. Sometimes I'm playing the rhythm exactly as written, right? Sometimes I'm doing it um, displaced, right? Or with different types of rhythmic patterns. Um, so let's do this. Um, let's start by just having rhythm section accompany us, just normal blues form, please, okay? Um, and let's all try and take a chorus, okay? Let's go down the line, okay? Let's all improvise, but the, the limitation, right? is that you can only use the notes of Sonny Rollins' uh, Sonny Rollins' Sunny Moon for two, okay? You can do any any rhythm you want, right? Any any uh, presentation, right, of the notes that you want, but those are the only notes you get. <laughs>
once you start to, to get really comfortable running like sort of like a motivic improvisation based on the melody, the next thing that you can do, right, is start running the basic chords, right, that represent the harmonic structure of this piece. So let's take um, let's take a, a basic rhythm, and I'm going to give you I'm going to give you eighth eighth quarter. No. Yeah. I'm going to give you eighth eighth quarter quarter rest. Eighth eighth quarter quarter rest. Okay. Laugh that with me. One, two, and three, four. 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 Cool. Awesome. Okay. So let's take a look at let's take a look at the first four bars of the harmony of Sunny One for Two, right? And it's just two chords. Okay. Um, for C instruments, it's going to be B flat D A uh, B flat D F A flat. Okay. Can I hear all the concert instruments play that with me? A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Okay, 
So let's hit two choruses of melody on Sunny Moon for two, okay? And then all together, right, let's outline these chord changes, okay, for one full chorus, and then we're gonna stop, okay? Here we go. A little faster. One, two, one, two, two, three, four. Three and four. 
structure of the melody to three ideas, right? You can do that. You can layer in the dominant seventh chord, and you have the scale to work with, okay? So let's go around the room again. Let's all take a chorus, okay, 12 bars, and uh, let's play with those three ideas. I'll start to give you an idea of what that can sound like. One, two, one, two, three, four.
at a time, okay? I want to give you uh, one more core idea, and then you know, I this is, it feels like there's some like really advanced improvisers here. So then I want to I want to just kind of give you one one caveat on top of this last core idea. Okay, so the the core idea is going to be the bebop scale. Okay, we have three main kinds of bebop scale, and today I just want to talk about one. It's the dominant bebop scale. Okay. Who's familiar with this idea? Raise your hand. Cool. Someone who's not a current or former student. Okay. <laughs> Tell me what the, the dominant bebop scale is. Severin, give yeah. it to me. Nice. How do we make a, a dominant bebop scale? Um, so you take the mixolydian scale and you just put a half step in between the one and the flat seven, so major yep. and flat seven. Exactly. Passing tone between seven and eight. Okay, so taking our uh, concert B flat seven, our B flat C seven, and our E flat G seven. Okay, I'm gonna play. You heard that half step. Sounds 
like that because of the addition, right, of the symmetry of this additional note, okay? If I just played the same kind of line, right, with the Mixolydian scale, it would sound like this. That's your cilantro, right? It gives you a little something extra, right? That is going to really like make you stand out um, and give you, um, you know, something new, right, to layer over this. Cool. So um, let's hit that one more time, and then I'm going to give you, I'm going to give uh, some of the more advanced improvisers something to chew on. Okay. So let's do this. Let's hit one chorus of the melody. One chorus of the um, the arpeggio, okay, the seven chords. One chorus of ascending scales. One chorus of descending bebop scale, okay, and then we'll stop there. For one, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Quarter, eight, 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 eight
factory thing. Yeah. Hold on. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
just say, that is a really hard tune that I gave them no notice on. Okay, so these guys deserve a big round of applause for that. Okay. That is a really cool, but a very hard tune, okay? Because there's, it's an asymmetrical phrase, right? You know, so you think it's gonna be 16 bars, but it's 14 bars, right? <laughs> and that doesn't sound like a crazy difference, but it doesn't need to be a crazy difference to make it, right, to make it really challenging. So this last tune, okay, um, comes from Happy People. Kenny Garrett, early 2000s, yeah, yeah. Like two? 2002, yeah, something like that. I was a, I was a young tot in, uh, in high school, okay? I was a freshman in high school when this came out, yeah. So it's just, it's just amazing, okay? Just like, right? Life-changing music here, guys. I think it's from the top. Where, where do you want to take it, like? Yeah, you go.
Yeah. If you've got an electric van, maybe grab that. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. 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 Ye
drummer, the keys, the guitar, etc. Chloe, what do you want to play? What do I want to play? Yeah. Good bait. Okay. We're doing good bait. Good bait? Yes. Good bait.
If you hear something play the second time, right, then it's going to happen for the third time, and that's going to be the last time. Oh, okay. Cool? Right. Cool. Awesome. Guys, let's call another tune. What do you want to do? Anybody know impressions? Yeah. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's uh let's take a look at Mr. PC. That was the other two that we'll get to in the workshop, okay? Let's take a look at Mr. PC. I
now let's play a ballad. Let's see what do you want to do? So you want to play? Let's play. 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 Let's play.
when you hear something tagged like that, right, you know it's going to be three. You know it's going to be three. Cool, guys. Cool. Next turn, we'll look to pull something. Tyler, what do you want, man? Let's go. Let's see here. Let's do some bye bye Blackbird. Yeah. Can we? Sure. Well, that's in the same key, though. Okay, so you oh, that's in the same key. <laughs> 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 yeah, Pop-Pipe's Blackbird. Can you play Cottontail? Can you beat? Go for it. Parker, why don't you play this one? Oh, Grace, can I play this one? And then get you up on the next one? Sure, yeah.
December 19th. December um, 19th, okay. And what would be fabulous is in that time, right? If if one tune, if one tune that you had to read on iReal B is memorized, right? Something that you can play from memory, right? The next time that we meet, right? That's a major milestone forward, right? In your in your development of your repertoire, right? So one, right? One new tune, right? One new idea, right? We worked on a bunch of different ideas tonight. Motivic improvisation, right? Dominant bebop, um, you know, running running the chords and the scales, right? If you take one of those ideas and really develop it, right, between now and then, again, I think that's another major step forward in your playing, okay? And then, right, the, the last and most important step, right, don't leave here tonight without having met someone new, right? Because all of these people are your colleagues, right? These are the people that you're going to be coming up with, right, here on the scene, right? So make sure that you meet some of the, some of the people on your instrument, right, who are already on the scene. Make sure you meet some of the people who are, you're going to be coming up with in the future, okay? We're going to play a tune that's always going to be the same, okay? It's always going to be the same, our last tune, okay? It's called Voyage by Kenny Barron. Voyage by Kenny Barron. No? I 
It's probably not an IRO B. Let's check real quick. Let's see.
Jensen Angelo, Jeff Miller, John Hector Shelley. Awesome guys, thank you so much for coming out. December 19th, right? December 19th is the next one. Try and make some progress, right? Try and push, right? Some aspect of your playing between now and December 19th. Cool? See you all next month. Thanks everybody. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah.